What a joy it is to come before you during this very important occasion, uh, during which time we are trying to see how God can move in the world and revive us again. My name is Bishop Dr. Paul Bupe. I'm the presiding prelate of the Revival Methodist Church in Zambia. Uh, I want to welcome you this moment uh, and acknowledge the leadership of the president of the Christian Leadership Leaders Fellowship, uh, Pastor Park, who has given me this opportunity to bring a word from the Lord. And I believe that God is going to speak to us. I also want to acknowledge the servant of the Lord, a Reverend Pastor Who, who has served ex exceptionally well in Lusaka, Zambia. It is my pleasure to bring a word from the Lord. For the next few minutes, allow me to lift up for your consideration the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 onwards. And the scripture reads, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be bread. If thou be the Son of God, command these stones into bread. Let us just begin by a word of prayer. Eternal God, we come before thy throne of grace. We pray that our Heavenly Father, you may speak to us. Yes, is there a word from the Lord? Yes, there is a word from the Lord. And therefore, Lord, I pray that speak to the world. Speak to the world so that, God, we may hear your voice. There are many voices in the world, psychological, social, political, all kinds of voices. But we are seeking a word from the Lord because it is life. We pray, our Heavenly Father, for this uh, online conference that, God, it will be life-changing. It will be life-changing because it is reaching to the ends of the world. You spoke that in the last days there shall come false prophets. In the last days, the word of God shall be preached to the ends of the world. And this is coming to pass. Even as I preach today, Lord, I'm speaking to people in the confines of their homes or locations wherever they are. It is God's doing. And it is an indication that we are living in the last and closing days. So God, speak to us one more time and raise up men and women of strong conviction about the kingdom of God who shall preach the word without compromise. These and many other blessings we pray, especially during these few days. We say, Lord, speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me quickly turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Verses 1 onwards, a very familiar scripture. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Let me pause right there. I know you Bible readers, you know the context within which this story has come. It is my pleasure to bring to your attention the subject entitled Identity. You might be wondering how it relates to an awakening. Yes, we are expecting an awesome awakening, especially after sliding into, you know, backsliding. A lot of people have backslidden. A lot of nations have backslidden. 
I will not point names, but my call is for you to focus with me on the subject identity. In this text, we read that the devil comes to Jesus at his lowest point after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He had not eaten for that long. And the devil comes to him and says, If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. My brothers and sisters, the devil knows that identity is critical. Identity is important. He says, If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Now, you need to look at the context of the story. In chapter 3, verse 17, you read about Jesus being baptized. And when he elided from the water, heavens opened and the, the Holy Spirit came down like a dove on Jesus. And a voice came from heaven, God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son. In other words, God identifies his son and affirms him. This one is the son of, you know, is my son. God identifies him as his son. That's important because in the next chapter, chapter 4, you find the devil comes back to him and says, if you are the son of God, Turn the stones into bread. In other words, the devil heard God identifying Jesus and affirming him. He heard him, he heard him very clearly when he said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the devil comes back in chapter 4 and says, If you are what God says you are, prove it. In other words, it's about identity. Do you know who you are? Did Jesus know who he was? Let me pause for a moment and take you to the next passage of scripture to show you that Jesus knew who he was. He knew his identity. Let me take you to the story when Jesus came to uh, uh, Caesarea Philippi. He came with his disciples. And then as they were at Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked them a question. Who do people say the son of, the son of man is? Who do people say the son of man is? Some say, you are John the Baptist. Others say, you are Elijah. Others say, maybe Jeremiah. Others say, maybe one of the prophets. Then Jesus turned around and said, Who do you say the Son of Man is? Who do you say I am? And then they said, Before anybody said anything, Simon Peter quickly said, You are the Messiah. And Jesus affirmed him, he said, You are right. It is not flesh and blood that, that has disclosed this to you. It is my Father in heaven that has revealed to you. You know, Jesus knew who he was. He knew that he was the Messiah. That's why many times he would tell his disciples, he would say, don't tell them what has happened here. Because he understood, you know, uh, messianic secret. You Bible readers, you understand the messianic secret. He had to hide until the time fully came for him to be crucified. So you know, Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew the significance of identity. Not only Jesus knew, but the devil also knew the importance of, of identity. That's why today I have come to you to talk about identity because I want you to know that your identity is critical. Your identity is critical for your success or failure. Let me state 
very, very strongly that your identity is very critical for your success or failure in all that you do. Sometimes we don't realize that. And we live as if we, 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 we are not what God says we are. Maybe that's why we fell in temptation. God says, this one is the son of mine. Hear him. Pointing at Jesus. This one is my son. Then the devil comes back and says, Jesus, if you are the son of God, turn the stones into bread. Let me lift up for your consideration three things that the devil targets when you are being tempted. He targets your appetite. He came to Jesus and challenged him, if you are the son of man, turn the stones into bread. Trying to take advantage of the appetite. He was hungry 40 days and 40 nights without food. So the devil comes to you at your lowest and challenges you. But if you know your identity, if you know who you are, you will not yield to temptation. My brothers and sisters, I, this is the best time for us to get to know who we are. We are children of the Most High God. Our identity is we are children of God. And therefore we need to take a stand. We need to take a stand as children of God. And never compromise on that. Because if you do, that's why you find yourself yielding to temptation. You yield by satisfying your appetites. The last of the flesh. The devil appealed to the last of the flesh. When he comes to you, he wants to see if you are going to yield to temptation by satisfying your appetites. How many people have fallen? How many preachers have fallen because of the last of the flesh? But to those who know who they are, they take a stand. They don't yield to temptation because they know I am a child of God. Jesus knew who he was. He said, Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I won't get into all the remas, you know, word study, but Jesus made it clear. You will not live by satisfying your appetites. You will not be successful by satisfying your flesh. Jesus said, I know who I am. And therefore, I will not yield to temptation because I know who I am. My brothers and sisters, do you know who you are? No sooner do you know who you are than you will be successful in all you do. You'll be able to take a stand basing on your identity. As if that's not enough. The devil is persistent. He takes Jesus up on the pinnacle of the, of the temple and he says, jump. For it is written, he shall give command to the angels, they shall take charge of you, so that you don't dash your foot against a stone. Again, Jesus did not yield to temptation. He rebuked the devil to get away from him and took a stand. The devil said, if you are the son of God, jump. Prove yourself. Do something spectacular. Show the world that you are the, the, the son of God. Prove it. And Jesus did not yield to temptation. Why? Because he knew his identity. He knew his identity. He didn't have to prove it to anybody because he knew who he was. I come back to you and challenge you. Why try to prove to the devil that you can do this. Satan went and said, jump, do something spectacular. 
He was appealing to the sense of pride. Because of pride, we try to do certain things because of pride. The devil knows very well that if your identity is compromised, you cannot succeed and overcome temptation. So today, I am speaking to you face to face. Do you compromise your stand because of pride of life? You want to become great? You want to be on the pinnacle of the temple? If Jesus yielded to temptation and flew, and then angels came and sustained him, can you imagine with CNN around, uh, BBC, and other, you know, uh, reporters around the world, Al Jazeera, Name them across the world. Jesus flying from the pinnacle of the temple. It will hit the head, headlines. But Jesus did not yield to temptation because he knew who he was. As we call upon the Lord to help us to revive his church, we need to know who we are. We are the children of the Most High God, bought by the blood of Jesus sanctified by his blood for his own kingdom. So the devil takes him up the highest peak of mountain and then he tells him, he shows him everything and he says, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all these things, that which you see, I'll give it to you. And Jesus rebuked the devil, get thee behind me. You know, you shall worship the Lord, your God only, and him alone shall you save. Jesus did not yield because he knew who he was. I wonder if you know who you are. I wonder if nations know who they are. I wonder if America knows who you are. America's foundations are rooted in God's word. And if you know who you are, why yield to temptation? Is it because of appetite? Is it because of pride of life? And the third one, the last of the eyes, the things we look at, the things we watch, has compromised our identity as children of you need to take your stand and never to compromise on who you are. God has made available the Holy Spirit. He has made available the Holy Spirit called along you to empower you. This empowerment talk is designed to make you strong. Remember you are somebody. Let's go back to the story of Jesus. He asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? The son of man is. They said, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others say, you know, one of the prophets. Then he turns around, who do you say that I am? I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, that no matter what people have called you, no matter what they have done to your identity, they have made you believe you are a nobody or whatever you think of yourself. There may be identity crisis in your mind. Remember, you are a child of God. If you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, He comes in your heart, changes your life. You have a new identity. No matter where you have been, they, have, they may have thought of as a criminal or whatever they, a prostitute, whatever they may call you. That doesn't really matter if you meet with Jesus and give your life to him. He gives you a new identity. When a person is in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, they have become new. You have a new identity. And start moving on. No matter what temptations you go through, remember you are a child of God. Do not yield to temptation because of appetite. 
Because of the flesh, the temptations of the flesh do not yield to temptation. Maybe it's because of pride of life. You want to show off, I'm educated, I'm rich. Doesn't matter because man is worthy more for what he is than what he has. Jesus paid the price for you and he paid in full. Therefore, I challenge you. This reminds me of your value. You have tremendous value because Jesus bought you with a price. I remember sometime in Sandusky, in the United States, I was serving as a pastor. Then there was snow. I don't know how many inches it was. So the churches were suspended. And then I said to myself, I can't sit back. I need to go and help somebody. I picked up a phone and called one of my members. I said, uh, would you kindly pick up the blower? We want to go and help senior citizens and those who can't help themselves to clear their driveways so that they don't have any problem. So that's how we took up and then we went to one of my members, a senior citizen in his 90s. And we began to blow that snow, blowing it up all the way up to the entrance. And then when the man heard the sound of the machine, he came out, you know, very apologetically. He was worried. He didn't know what to pay us. Then he said to me, how much am I going to pay you for what you have done for me? He didn't recognize me because his sight was somehow blurred. Then I said to him, Jesus paid it all. And when I said Jesus paid it all, this man recognized this, my voice. And he says, oh, it is the pastor. And his face brightened. He was very happy. Jesus paid it all. And he was very happy. This reminds me of what the Lord has done for you. Jesus paid it all. You don't need to pay for it at all. Just get to know today. Your identity is you are a child of God. Jesus paid it all. Whatever the devil may accuse you of, bear in mind that Jesus paid it all. You don't need to do anything spectacular. You don't need to do anything miraculous for you to be acceptable in the sight of God. Jesus paid it all on the cross. For this revival that is coming, we are calling it revival because we know a number of you have backslidden. You may have lost the first love, but Jesus has paid it all. And it's time to stand up now and be honest and begin to preach the gospel one more time. This is my appeal. You are a child of God. You know, the devil knows that identity is critical. Some of you have gone through moments of trial, especially with coronavirus. This has really shaken the world and has demonstrated to us that things can change. But no matter what you go through, the sufferings that the people worldwide have gone through should not shake your faith because you know who you are. As long as you know you are a child of God, no matter what you go through, tempted and tried, we are often tempted to wonder why should it be thus, O oh dear Lord? Why should it be thus, my brother and sister, wherever you are, do not yield to temptation. Stand strong because you know who you are. God is counting on you. You know the scripture is very clear. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to people. And God is faithful who will not tempt you beyond that which you can bear. 
In the time of trial, in the time of temptation, he will provide a way of escape so that you can bear it. The Bible is clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to people. And you can count on the faithfulness of God. What has come to you is not unique. It's not about you. It is common to all people. But the Bible says God is faithful. You can count on the faithfulness of God. And then he says, in the time of temptation, God will make a way of escape. Apart from that, he understands even your capacity. Every vehicle has a capacity. Some are 12 tons, others are 2 tons, 100 tons. It depends. God also understands your capacity. What has come to you, he knows you can bear it. All you have to know is get to know who you are. Don't yield to temptation. The devil knows that if he messes up with your identity, you definitely yield to temptation. So today I'm happy to present to you my Lord and my Savior Jesus, who understood who he was, that he was the Messiah. And he didn't need to prove himself to the devil or to do anything contrary to the holiness of God. My Lord Jesus wanted people to know who he was. He said, do you know who I am? What do people say I am? Whatever they say about me doesn't really matter. I know who I am. I am the Son of God. I am the Messiah. I am that I am. So my brothers and sisters, your identity is the main target of the devil. He aims at, at, at your identity, at who you are. If you don't know who you are, you are going to fall. You are not going to stand because in this generation, things are changing really fast. In this generation, we are going to see the scripture fulfilled. In this generation, we are going to see signs of the end of times. And it is up to you now to know who you are. You know, even in your day-to-day -day business, your identity is important. Even me as an African, I need to know who I am. Otherwise, somebody will give me a false identity, will define me. If I don't know who I am, I'll hate even the pigment of my skin if I don't know who I am. So we need to know who we are and be at peace with who I am. Jesus was very much at, at peace and he said, what about you? Whom do you say the son of man is? He wanted them to know he knows who he is. You are the Messiah. And then he says, it is by divine disclosure that you have come to confess who I am. It took heaven to disclose to you no flesh and blood did reveal to you, except my Father in heaven revealed to you. Identity. Know who you are. Nobody will put you down when you know who you are. Nobody will stop you if you know who you are. I challenge you today. Take on the image of Jesus Christ. When a person is in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. You are a child of God. Regardless of what others say about you. Regardless of what your mother, your sister, your brother have said about you. It doesn't really matter because Jesus paid it all. He bought you by his blood. And you are a child of God. And I'm happy to announce to you, God loves you. God cares for you. No matter what you go through your sufferings, your, your pain. Whatever you go through, God loves you. And it shall be well very shortly. May God bless you and keep you 
as you remember, number one, yield not to temptation by yielding to the last of the, satisfying the last of the flesh. Do not yield to temptation by entertaining the pride of life. Do not yield to temptation by entertaining the last of the eyes, the thing, things we look at. My brother and my sister, you are important. That's why you cannot yield to all these things because you have been bought with a price. Jesus paid it all. God bless you. God keep you. May God heal you. And this is my prayer. Let us just come before the Lord in prayer. Maybe somebody may want to accept Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. You never know somebody has made up his mind to accept Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. I invite you to join me in this prayer. A very simple prayer. <clears throat> you say, Dear Lord Jesus, I open my heart. Come in and lead me. Forgive all my sins. I repent today. And I acknowledge that God, I am a child of God. And that, Lord, I need you every hour. Guide me. Lead me. I'm willing to follow. Above all, Lord, send me wherever you want me to go. I will go. Forgive all my sins. Present and past sins. Forgive me, Lord. In Jesus' blessed holy name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, God bless you, and God keep you. Until next time, let's continue showing up on this platform as other ministers come to minister to you. I thank you for listening. God bless you, and goodbye.